name's Jordan Bennett with Jordan Bennett and Associates at Keller Williams Realty. I want to talk to you today about something that happens in every escrow, uh, which is negotiating repairs. You know, we know that there's two big hoops to jump through when you're in a transaction, uh, the appraisal and the home inspection. So a home inspector, what are they going to do? They're going to go in there with a fine tooth comb and find every little thing uh, that's possibly wrong with that property. A lot of times there's going to be things that are deferred maintenance items. There's going to be sometimes some real significant major systems items. Sometimes there's going to be code items where, you know, home was built in 1975 and today in 2020, the code is different, right? So that when the home was built, it was acceptable. But today, you know, home inspectors are going to call certain things into question that were okay at one time and are not okay today. A couple things about in inspections. First off, everything is negotiable. Uh, in other words, a home could be literally falling off a cliff. The seller doesn't have to fix it, uh, but the buyer also doesn't have to buy it. As long as the home is contingent on the inspection, that's something that needs to be negotiated through, hopefully to come up with a win-win uh, for both property for both parties. So nothing is mandatory, everything is negotiable. I equate negotiating repairs like you're sitting at the poker table. As a seller, you don't wanna give away the farm and you don't wanna leave money on the table, but you also don't want to kill the deal. You know, as a buyer, You've got to be looking at those repair items and determine are any of these things deal breaker items if the seller's not willing to do them am i willing to walk away and then of course that negotiation is going to take place hopefully resulting in a win-win for both parties a couple things i found about negotiating repairs first off the perceived cost of fixing things is almost always greater than the actual cost often for both parties so sometimes a buyer will put something on a repair request list and they're really items of little consequence that could be fixed by a handyman in a couple hours, but they appear at the outset to be much bigger you know, than they actually are. I found that when representing a seller, it's usually better to do the fixes because again, usually a buyer is looking for much bigger credit than it would actually cost to fix those things. However, there's a couple ways that that can unravel um, by doing repairs instead of negotiating a credit. One is that if there's any vagueness in their request. So if a buyer asks for something to be fixed and then the seller fixes it, it's always possible that at the 11th hour, at that final walkthrough before closing, the buyer says, I asked you to do this, you did this, you did it differently than I was looking for and what I expected, um, so I want you to do it a different way. Or instead of repairing it, I wanted you to replace it. Things like that can happen. So you do have to, to be aware that if you're negotiating specific repairs, you wanna be super, super specific and leave no room for vagueness. The second issue with actually doing repairs as a seller is it sometimes can snowball into a bigger issue. For example, I've seen situations where a seller intended to just do a minor fix on say a furnace and it turns out that the furnace wasn't fixable. And when they actually went to fix the furnace, the contractor said, we can't fix this, you have to replace it. And guess what, when they fixed the furnace, they had to replace the coil on top. And then it turned out that the ductwork was no good. And all of a sudden these things start to unravel. So you wanna make really sure that you're very specific on what you're going to fix. And it's not a bad idea as a seller to get some bids and estimates up front before responding to that buyer's request so that you're not committing yourself to something that's gonna potentially snowball. Um, another thing to consider, there's always the option of giving a credit or negotiating something else into the deal in lieu of repairs. I've seen sellers negotiate in a refrigerator or a washer and dryer or a patio set or a big screen TV instead of actually doing those repairs or even giving a credit for the repairs. So negotiating repairs is definitely an opportunity to think creatively, to come up with a win-win. Sometimes there might be something that has a lot of value to a buyer that has little value to the seller. And so there might be that a win-win is created in a situation where something like that can be offered. And finally, I would say when negotiating repairs, it's really important to look at the big picture. I would say for both buyers and sellers, you wanna be leery of being penny smart and pound foolish. I have seen deals where you're talking about you know, a seven figure deal that falls out over a couple thousand dollars. You know, really, really foolish to walk away from, from a deal that makes sense in all other ways for you know, a fraction of a percentage of the purchase price. So it's important to remember that everything's negotiable, but to look at the big picture and to try, you know, try the best uh, possible to come up with a win-win for both sides. Thank you.